Hey everyone, Miss Gray here at Jeter, and today we are going to work through some problems on solving multi-step inequalities. So solving multi-step inequalities is very similar to the process that we use to solve equations. We are still going to simplify the expressions on both sides, and remember we use that old don't call me after midnight, call me after midnight. So we distributed if there were any parentheses, we we combined like terms. Now remember, combining like terms or combining those like terms on the same side, okay, just like we did with equations when we combined them on the same side of the equal sign. And the inequalities, we're going to combine them on the same side of the inequality sign. And then we're going to move on to um, moving the variables should we need to add or subtract to remove the constant, and then multiply or divide to remove the coefficient. The difference with inequalities is this last step here, and this is what I call our golden rule. And our golden rule is if we multiply or divide by a negative, we must flip the inequality sign. Okay, so this is what we call the golden rule. Okay, so let's work through some problems. In this problem, we're asked to solve the inequality and graph the solution set. So I'm going to start off by drawing my dividing line, and then I'm going to write my steps off to the side as a reminder that don't call me after midnight. And I'm going to go through the process. So first, do I have anything to distribute? I do not. There's no parentheses. The next step is combining like terms. So looking at this, just the sides, it does appear I have like terms. I have this negative 8x and this positive 2x are on that same side of that inequality sign. So I'm going to combine these two terms here. That leaves me with negative 6x. And then I'm just simply going to bring down that plus 5. And then I'm going to bring down that negative 13. So there's my combined like terms. My next step is to move the variable. There's no variable on the other side of that dividing line that I need to get over to the other side. And now I'm going to add or subtract. And this is when we deal with our constants. So here I'm going to subtract 5 to both sides. Okay. And so when I do this, they cancel out. They leave me with 0. I am just going to simply bring down my negative 6x. And then here I have negative 13 minus 5. Be very careful here. This is why I highly recommend we're always plugging things into Desmos. We have that as a tool that gives me negative 18. And then keep in mind, this entire time, this inequality sign was following us all the way down. It still is. Okay. And then my last step here is to multiply divide. So I'm going to divide by negative 6 because I want to have that positive x. And when I do that, let's see, my 6's cancel out. I'm left with x. And then negative 18 divided by negative 6 is positive 3. And now this is where that golden rule of inequalities is going to come into play. Here, because I divided by that negative 6, when I bring this sign down, I'm going to flip the sign. So no longer is it going to remain as a less than or equal to. It is now a greater than or equal to. So the solution to this inequality is that my x is greater than or equal to positive 3. So let's go ahead and just um, graph this solution set. I'm going to put my 3 in the middle. And then I'll put my 2 here going down my number line. And then I'll put my 4 and my 5 going up. And now when I graph this, because um, my 3 is included, okay, I'm going to graph that with a closed circle. And then part of all of my solutions are going to be to the 
right here. So it's going to be anything heading from three all the way to this way. Okay. Now, how can we test this? Well, choose a number, any number that's to the right on that number line and plug it into the original equation, see if it makes it true. So for our sake, let's go back to our original equation and I'm just gonna use, let's say X is 10, because X 10 would be all the way over here. So here I'm gonna plug in 10 whenever there's an X. So I have negative eight times 10 plus five plus two times 10 should be a number that is less than or equal to negative 13. And now I'm gonna solve. So I have negative 80 plus five plus 20 is less than or equal to negative 13. And here I have negative 80 plus five is negative 75. Negative 75 plus 20 is negative 55. So I have an answer that says negative 55 is less than or equal to 13. That is a true statement. So I know that anything to the right of that works. By the same, let's just say if we forgot to slip, flip the sign and we kept it as a less than or equal to, let's test it. Well, I'm gonna use the number zero because that would be on this side of my number line. So let's see if I had forgotten to put the sign, I'm gonna do the same thing. So go back to my original equation. I have eight times zero. And remember, these are just test points. I'm just proving that my answer is correct. It's always a good thing to do. Plus five plus two times zero, and this should be less than or equal to negative 13. So negative eight times zero is zero plus five negative two times zero is zero. So here I have five is less than or equal to negative 13. Now think about that. Is five less than negative 13? It is not. This is not a true statement. So that is how you can prove to yourself and double check your answer that that is in fact um, an incorrect inequality to place there. Let's look at another one. So same thing, I'm gonna start off by putting my steps to the side that don't call me after midnight. And here, uh, see, draw my dividing line. So the first thing I am gonna have to distribute. So I'm gonna have to distribute that three to the X. So I have three X and then that three to the positive 10, which is plus 30 plus six, and then I'm just simply bringing my zero down. And then remember my inequality, just like my equal sign was following all the way down. So distribution done. My next step is combining like terms. So I do have, these are like terms on this side. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and combine those. So adding these two together, I get 36. And then I'm just simply gonna bring down my three X. And here I'm bringing down my inequality, bringing down my zero. Okay, no move the variable. The next is to add or subtract. So this is when we deal with our constants. So I'm going to subtract 36 from both sides. Okay. And then these cancel out leaves me with zero. Okay. So I'm left with three X. I'm simply just gonna bring that down. And then zero minus 36 is negative 36. And as my final step, I am dividing by three. So I have X and then negative 36 divided by three is negative 12. And remember my inequality sign just traveled all the way down. Now, here we go. Does this qualify? Did we do we need to use the golden rule of inequalities? Remember, the golden rule says if we divide or multiply by a negative in this last step, we uh, need to flip the inequality sign. So here we did not multiply or divide by a negative. So we are simply just going to bring that inequality down. The inequality is going to stay that x is less than negative 12. 
it does not matter that we received a negative as that final answer. Remember the golden rule, we only flip the inequality if in fact we multiply or divide by a negative, which we did not. So let's go ahead and graph this solution set. So here I'm going to put this negative 12 right here in the middle. And then I'll put negative 11, negative 10, and then I'll go down a number line, negative 13, negative 14. And now let's mark the solution. So because this is just a less than, not a less than or equal to, I'm going to graph it with an open circle. And then x is less than negative 12. So on this number 9, which number is less than negative 12? Remember, we're going down the number line. 0 is over here. So it is going to be any number that is being on this way on our number line is going to be part of the solution set. And as always, we can always test it by choosing a test point. When possible, a good test point, I always like to use zero. It's very easy to do the math. And then you could probably use, say, like a negative 20 on the, on the, uh, on the other side. So let's take a look at another one. So on this one, solving the inequality, graphing the solution set, same thing. I'm going to write my steps off to the side. That's just a strategy I like to use. And I, I still go through all of these. So my first is I'm going to distribute. I see parentheses. So I'm going to distribute my 2 to everything. So I have 2 times x. I'm left with 2x. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. And then I'm simply going to bring down my negative 12 and my negative 16 on the other side here, okay? Um, keep in mind that this inequality right now is following me all the way down, okay? So my distribution done. My next is to combine like terms. Well, here on this side, remember combining like terms is on the same side. I have negative eight and negative 12, so I'm gonna combine those that gives me negative 20. Remember, good chance to use Desmos here. And then I'm going to bring down my 2x. And here I'm just going to bring down my negative 16. Okay. My move the variable. Well, I don't have an x that I need to get back on the other side. So that part is done. Okay, my next step is to add or subtract. This is when I'm dealing with my constant. So I'm going to add 20 to both sides. Okay, when I do that, I'm left with a positive 4. Okay, I haven't done anything with my 2x. I'm bringing it down. And here, negative 20 and positive 20 leads me to 0. That's what I wanted. So add or subtract done. And then my last step is to multiply divide. So I'm going to divide by a positive two. And I say positive, so now I know I'm not flipping the sign. So when I do that, cancels out, I'm left with x. And then four divided by two is two. And now I'm simply gonna bring down this inequality here, okay? I'm gonna write it pointing the same way. Okay, now I always like to put my uh, variables in front. So I'm going to rewrite this equation with my x in front, my 2 behind, but I want to make sure this inequality stays the same way. Okay, it's showing that my x is less than, so I want to make sure that it's staying the same way when I rewrite this. This is not a golden rule opportunity. This is just a Miss Gray is telling you to rewrite this with your variable in front. Now we're gonna go ahead and we are going to graph the solution set. So here I have a two, three, four, a one, and a zero. And when I graph it, because I have that my two is included, it's going to graph with a closed circle. And then x is less than, so it's my solution is going to be any number 
on this side of the number line. So x is less than or equal to 2. This is telling me I can choose any number less than or equal to 2, any real number at all, and it will make this inequality true. Okay. Let's look at number 4. Well, I know how much you like this one because you saw the fraction, and I know how much how much my classes love dealing with fractions. You know that fractions are Miss Gray's favorite. So let's go ahead. First thing we're going to do is we're going to distribute. So we're distributing that negative one-fifth to everything inside these parentheses. And if you're not comfortable with doing the fraction mentally, I don't want you to. I want you to put it into Desmos. So if I do the negative one-fifth times 15x, I'm left with negative 3x, and then negative 1 fifth times negative 35. So remember, negative times a negative is a positive. And then I'm left with positive 7. And then I'm simply going to bring down my negative 2, my inequality sign, and I'm bringing down my 50. So distribution step is done. The next thing that I'm going to do is combine like terms. So here I have like terms on this side. I'm going to go ahead and combine them. These me to a positive 5. And I'm just going to bring down my negative 3x, my inequality signs following me, and that 50. Okay, I don't have a variable to move. Here I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. Okay, because I'm on my add or subtract. These cancel out, leave me with zero. I'm simply going to bring down my negative 3x. Here is my inequality again, and then 50 minus 5 is 45. And then my last step is multiply or divide. So I'm going to divide by negative 3. So you should already be ready to do something since we are dividing by that negative. Okay, we know that golden rule is coming into play. And when I do so, I am left with x and then 45 divided by negative 3. Well, a positive divided by a negative is a negative. And when I plug it into Desmos, it's negative 15. And then I just have to bring down my inequality sign. Well, because I divided by that negative, I am flipping my inequality sign. So it's no longer a greater than. It's now a less than. And I'm just going to plot this point. I have a negative 15, negative 14, negative 13, and then I'll go down my number line. And now when I plot it, because it is only less than, um, it is, I'm going to graph it with an open circle. And then everything is going to be, I can pick any number that is on that side of the number line, and it will make this inequality true. I want to encourage you on the next two problems to go ahead and pause the video and work them out on your own uh, before you come back and check with what I'm doing. So go ahead and pause the video and see what you get and then come back. So here you notice I already did my steps, just a strategy I like to use drew my dividing line. So I'm going to first step is to distribute. Here I have my decimal. So I am going to open up my Desmos calculator, plug it in. So I just simply bring down my 22. And here I'm distributing my negative 7.2 to everything inside the parentheses. So putting this into Desmos, negative 7.2 times negative 4x, it gives me a positive 28.8x. And then I'm going to do the same. I have 7.2 times 3 gives me a negative 21.6. And now I'm just going to bring down my um, dividing, my inequality, sorry, and then I have negative 28.4. So my next step, I combine like terms. So here I have just 22 and 20, negative 21.6. So 22 minus 21.6 is 0.4. I have plus 28.8x. And then I'm simply going to bring down my inequality. And I have negative 28.4. 
The next thing, let's see, I have no variable to move here. It's going to be add or subtract. So I'm going to subtract 0.4 on both sides. Okay, this cancels out to zero. So I'm going to bring down my 28.8x. Some of you may already see what's going to happen. And then my 28.4 minus my 0.4x um, should give me a negative 28.8x. Or sorry, no x, just negative 28.8. And then my last step is to multiply or divide. So here I'm going to divide by 28.8, do that to both sides. Okay. And I have an x and then negative 28.8 divided by positive 28.8 just gives me a negative one. And then I need to bring down my inequality sign. So I'm gonna check to see, do I use the golden rule? Well here, I did not divide by a negative. I, in fact, divided by a positive, so my inequality sign is remaining in the same direction. So I have x is less than negative 1. So here, I'm going to go ahead and plot the solution set or graph the solution set. I have negative 1, and then going up the number line, I have 0 and 1. Going down the number line, negative 2, negative 3. And when I plot this point, because it's only x is less than, I'm going to plot it with an open circle. And x is less than, I'm heading down. So any real number that is heading to the left of negative 1 on that number line would make this equation true. Let's look at number 6. I'm hoping that you paused the video and you went ahead and um, just came back to see if you were on the right tracks. Notice I put my steps on the side, drew my dividing line, and now I'm going to work on my distribution. So here I'm distributing that negative 2. Remember what it always says, always take the sign that's in front of it. So that's why I'm distributing negative 2 to everything inside those parentheses. So I have a negative 4x. And then negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. And then I have that plus 3. And then I'm just going to bring my 9x down, my inequality sign, and my 9 down. Okay. So then my next step is to combine like terms. So here I've got two things going on. I have my 6 and my 3, which are like terms on the same side. And I also have these x's that are like terms on the same side. So I'm going to combine both of these. So I have 9x minus 4x. I get 5x. And then a positive 6 plus a positive 3 is a positive 9. And now I'm just going to simply bring down my inequality sign, and I have 9. Okay, So my combined like terms, done. My next step is to move the variable. I only have an x on the left side of my inequality, so nothing to move. And now I move on to add or subtract. This is when I deal with my constant. So I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides. So these cancel out to be 0. I'm bringing down my 5x, so I have 5x. And then these cancel out to be 0. So make sure you're writing your 0 here. This is not one of those that's a no solution. We still have a variable. Okay, so we're left with 0 on the right-hand side. Okay, I'm just simply going to continue to bring my inequality to sign down. I don't want to forget it. And then my last step is I am dividing by five. So here I'm left with x and then zero divided by five is simply zero. And I'm bringing my inequality sign here. Okay. So now I'm going to plot this on my number line. I'm going to graph the solution set. So I have zero. I'm going to go up my number line, one, two, down my number nine, negative one, negative two. And now I'm going to plot this point. 
So here, it, because it includes zero, because of that equal sign here, I'm going to graph it with a closed circle. And then greater than is heading up my number line. So it's all real numbers to the right. So my x is greater than or equal to zero.